Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS and the inventor of the CTKS method and Borsog Trading. If you're new, a very warm welcome and welcome back KS family. In interesting news today, the new FTX CEO says the crypto exchange FTX could be restarted. This news has actually driven the market cap of FTX up 32.2%. The FTX token FTT is currently ranked 208. Binance has registered as a virtual asset service provider in Poland. Yesterday we talked about Bizlato. Today the plot thickens. FinCEN lists Binance amongst the top Bitcoin counterparties of Bizlato. FinCEN, the United States Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. A bureau of the Treasury Department has argued that Binance is linked to the illegal cryptocurrency biz platform Bizlato. According to FinCEN, Binance was among the biggest counterparties that received Bitcoin from Bizlato between May 2018 and September 2022. The important thing to note is that they received Bitcoin as the world's largest crypto exchange that could be on the books. One of the more important things to note is that FinCEN did not mention Binance as a top three sending counterparty. Binance was not actively sending anything to Bizlato. The biggest Bitcoin senders to Bizlato between May 2018 and September 2022 were Hydra, a Finland based exchange, Locals Bitcoin and Finico. The vast majority of people in the crypto space had never heard of Bitslato except for yesterday's news. Binance is currently collaborating with FinCEN on the Bizlato case. In the main markets in the past trading session, energy, communication services and healthcare were the greatest gainers. The market overall, all sectors, was down 0.44%. Having a look at the heat map can give some indication as to what was up and what was down. Oil and gas integrated did quite well. Healthcare plans and medical devices also did well. The probability of a 25 basis point increase in the federal funds rate is currently 96.3% up from 94.8% yesterday. We can see that European markets basically took a hit in the past trading session. From the statistics that came through recently, we can see unemployment claims came through at 190,000. They were expecting 214,000. The labor market remained strong. The Philly Fed Manufacturing Index was expected to contract 10.9. It contracted 8.9. That was a better outcome than expected. With that said, let's run the numbers. Bitcoin is currently up 1.52% to 21.096. Ethereum is up 1.53% 1 to 1557. In the past trading session, we saw the VIX, the fear gauge of the market, just slightly come down a little bit. But we're seeing that this hasn't broken out of this downward path just yet. We saw the main market sell down. Bond prices and bond yields are just normalizing. They're still in their trend patterns. Gold headed towards its mythical 1940 and the dollar sold down. One particular thing to just keep your eye on is junk bonds. Junk bonds has lost its first initial level of support. It's starting to curl over. It may form a lower high this is a low and this would be a low, but this would be higher. So a higher low than was previously seen. That would be exceptionally good for the markets. Just keep your eye on junk bonds at the moment. Another thing to keep in mind is what happens with the DXY. Are we going further down or are we going up? The answer to that question depends on many things, but overall market structure is incredibly important. And that is what we see through the CTKS method. The DXY is currently 102085. We can see there's substantial support in the DXY from a structural perspective. The key is to understand that these support and resistance lines, these smart money buy and sell levels are not formed through recent price action, which is what about 98% 
of commentators do inside the market. They'll just look at the past month or so and say, oh, this is the entire trading history. From a statistical stance, that's not a really good idea because trading history is trading history. We need to look at all of it, not just a sample. We need a census. And that's where the CTKS method comes in. It runs the numbers and it runs the numbers across all available statistics. Hence, the SL at 102.060 has been formed not just from recent price history, but from all of price history. We can see that the DXY recently came up to this 102.733 level, this smart money sell level. And indeed, it was a smart money sell level. The smart money just hammered it down. And where did it stop? It slowed at around 102.060 and it reversed as we would expect it to around 101.749. It's actually pushed itself up and over this 102.060 level. What that actually means is that it potentially the DXY is going to try and challenge this 102.733 level again. And this would coincide very nicely with the euro versus the USD. When we think about the euro, it's currently 108279. It's coming up to a smart money sell level at 108348. That means the sellers will actually pile in to try to drive the price down. And where would that price be driven down to? 108. 092 and 107865. We can see there's quite a lot of support down here for the euro currently. We need to keep our eye on the DXY because it's a global wrecking ball. Basically, if the DXY just comes up too much, it impacts all global markets and negatively so. A decrease in the DXY is also incredibly good for gold. We look at the main market because of rule 225. Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity. Turning our attention to Bitcoin and looking at the longs and the shorts, we can see the longs have started to get a bit of confidence back because what are we seeing here? The shorts are getting liquidated, but the shorts are also starting to come back into the market. In the past 24 hours, there's been 51.51 million in total liquidations across 16,981 positions. That's really low. That's almost weekend liquidations. And when we look at the past 24 hours, about 59% of total liquidations have been short. What about the past 12 hours? Well, nearly 70%. What about the past four hours? Oh, like an 84% short. What about the past hour? 79% short. So we can see the shorts have been liquidated, causing the price to go up. And when we turn to our chart of total liquidations, we can see, yes, the shorts did outmatch the longs, but it's really, really low volume at the moment. What are we witnessing inside Bitcoin's market structure? Well, we find that out through the CTKS method. We saw that there was a quite a large sell-off and it found smart money buying support. And what has it done? It's basically pinged from this 20,479 level up to nearly that 21,206 level. The sellers were so strong that it didn't actually even reach 21,206 before it was pushed down. But it will come into support around the 20,941 level down to 20,889. The key for Bitcoin now, in order to maintain a positive momentum to the outside, upside, it needs to get over 21,206. I've been keeping a fairly close eye on BUSD market capitalization, and we can see the market cap for BUSD continues to slide down. And one thing that we do note is the market cap of Tether is increasing. People are pulling their money out of BUSD and popping it into Tether. Let's get a bit of a feel for the top cryptos. Bitcoin is currently up nearly 12% over the past seven days. Ethereum nearly 9%. BNB up around 2.6%. XRP a little over 5%. And ADA 
around 3.3% up over the past seven days. The two standouts have been Solana up over 30% and Shiba Inu nearly up 22%. The greatest gainers in the past 24 hours, Ravencoin up nearly 15%, FXS up 13%, Enginecoin nearly 12% up, Synthetix a little over 8% up, Lunacy over 7%, Casper, our friendly ghost, up over 6%, and Zek and Bat just a bit over 5.5% up. Helium is feeling really deflated, being the greatest loser in the past 24 hours, down a little over 7.3%, followed by Aave. And we can see CoinMarketCap is going bananas. Compound down 4.7%, LDO 3.32, Convex Finance, Aptos, Mana and Quant all down. Let's have a look at the relative movement of the top eight. Over this period of time, Bitcoin is up nearly 20%, Ethereum up just 10%. So Bitcoin is actually outperformed the alt. We don't see that that often. Generally, Bitcoin is like watching grass grow, but the grass is growing really fast in the summer. The thing to note, USDT, USDC and BUSD, these are all stable coins. Tether, Circle and Binance USD. And I was pointing out how Binance USD is falling in terms of market cap. That's a fairly good indicator of how people feel about the centralized exchange, Binance. And Binance is the world's largest crypto exchange. We can see BNB, the fourth largest crypto. It's up a little over one and a half percent. XRP is up over 5% and ADA following Bitcoin's gravity. And we talked a lot about Bitcoin's gravity in yesterday's video. Please let me know, what do you understand of Bitcoin's gravity? It's a really good thing to chat about. Looking at the next eight, we can see Doge up around 1.2% over the same period of time that Bitcoin is up 20%. Matic is currently up 4.4%. Solana was doing very well. At one stage it was up nearly 50%, but now it's 27% up. Dot a little under 11% up, not doing too badly. Ship 17% up during this particular time period. Litecoin actually going down. We can see that Litecoin has been quite weak. This is actually the opposite of the behavior that Litecoin was showing recently. Litecoin was really, really strong. Now it's become much, much weaker. DAI is a stable coin and Tron is up nearly 5%. Yesterday, we were talking about habits and especially the habit of persistence and commitment. There were some absolutely awesome comments from our beloved global family. And I just want to tell you all how much Kate and I appreciate you. Art had a beautiful comment that I'd like to share with you. Art said, it's been difficult to be patient for a retracement to begin buying again. Today, made a few buys on the downturn, but now I have sell orders if price increases and buy orders if price decreases. And this is the key part. Without commitment to my trades and persistence in keeping track of the markets and my chart, charts, there is no way that I could trade profitably. Rule 130 is a really good rule to understand. Make volatility your best friend. It's actually by making volatility your best friend, you can do what art is talking about. And there is an art to what art is talking about. Art said some really beautiful things. I think most of us that are here now have endured the worst of the bear market and we are committed and persistent. We are here, we are committed, we are persistent and we will continue to gain profits in the market and in positive excellence. And thank you Art for your very kind comments. And a big thank you also to CJ. Habits are a great subject. And CJ said, after the New Year's, everybody talks about New Year's resolutions. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And within a week, pretty much we've all forgotten and just fallen back into our old habits. Creating new habits is not easy, as CJ said. 
So CJ recommends choose goals you can manage and for everybody that will be different. Writing the momentum of accomplishment is a beautiful turn of phrase that CJ used and it just takes a little bit of time and effort and energy each and every day. Say, is this good for me or is this bad for me? Do I go for that walk? Do I eat that apple or do I eat junk food and sit on the couch? What am I doing here? You'll find that with just one movement, for example, reaching out and eating that apple, that starts a whole chain reaction that just benefits your entire life. And of course, it doesn't have to be about eating. You can just say something kind to someone and genuinely mean it as well. Catch people doing the right thing instead of catching them doing the wrong thing. Tales from the Man Cave said a really beautiful thing. Persistence really makes a difference. Without it, we would not be here. We would have given up sometime last year. And whether or not we've already seen the bottom, we would not be here to see the fruits of our hard work going forward. I'm a really firm believer in getting up one more time than you're knocked down. And this world will knock you down. Make no mistake about it. Just get yourself and dust yourself off and say, ha! world i'm getting up thank you dinesh for your kind comment as well my friend dinesh talked about stable coins being green in the top 100 if you just zoom out and think about it this way when you've got a stable coin being in the green in the top 100 and they're amongst the greatest gainers it means the market has traumatically sold down because stable coins are pretty stable they don't move much when they're the greatest gainers, it means that the market has been hit with a wave of selling activity that is probably unsustainable. It could indicate a short term bounce. And that's actually what we saw after those stable coins went green. A big thank you too to John. I suppose the best thing that you can do is to turn persistence and commitment into habits. One habit I've had for a long time now is to watch your videos, Ken, every morning. Ah, oh, thanks, John. It helps give me some understanding of otherwise extremely complex markets. Thank you, my friend. And a big thank you to everybody who commented, or if you didn't comment and you're just watching, a big thank you to you too. Vincent said, I think the US budget FUD storm is incoming, and it is, my friend. We've seen this play out many times over the years. The, the debt ceiling will not be raised. And then, of course, the government will need to shut down and you name it. It's all basically a FUD storm. The government does one thing. It keeps on operating. As traders, we make volatility our best friend. We don't mind volatility. I love that our community is so caring towards each other. It's just so beautiful to see. Oscar said, what is the smallest useful change that you could do and that you would do? For example, if you want to eat more healthy food, you could reach out for that apple, but only if you've bought the actual apple and you can. So would you go to the supermarket to pick one up? Many people could do 30 minutes of exercise every day, but would you actually do it? A very brilliant thing, Oscar. Thank you for sharing that, my friend. There's just so much support and kindness and love inside our global family. It's just beautiful to see. And Beardy said, tiny improvements every day add up to big improvements over time. Thank you, my friend. Anything worthwhile in this world takes persistence and commitment. You need to be really dedicated and success will ultimately follow. And well done to everybody who pops in their CTKS code each and every day. You're just awesome. Let's keep the conversation going on creating positive habits. And I'll definitely read out more comments in tomorrow's video. Even if you can share the smallest idea, it will be valuable to other people. And that's what we're all about as a global family. Just helping each other. Please share any good habit that you've come across that has improved your life. 
Because the human brain is geared for survival. It is literally geared for survival. It's easy to think negatively about things because, after all, that's survival instinct. But survival and prospering are two very, very different things. You don't want to just survive in this world. You want to prosper. How do you prosper? You just literally create more positive habits in your life than negative ones. How do we kickstart the process through daily positive affirmations for abundance, financial success and happiness? And that is what the CTKS Creed is all about. The first really, really positive thing that you can do is to know that the universe wants you to succeed. If you feel that everything and everybody is against you, you're going to push yourself into survival mode and out of prosperity mode. When people are in survival mode, showing kindness, integrity and gratitude is the last thing that they want to do. After all, they're just trying to survive. This is a prosperity habit to show kindness, integrity and gratitude each and every day. Prosperity is about knowing that opportunities and life reset daily, that you are worthy. You don't have to go fast because that's all about survival. You, in fact, need to just get it right. Go slow to go fast. It may take a little bit longer, but that's not important. What is important is doing it correctly. Prosperity is all about starting small and scaling, not going big and failing. If we look across the crypto landscape and indeed into the stock market or anywhere else you want to look, basically everybody wants to get big so fast and they fall over their own feet and they bring so many other people with them. Going slow is not a problem. A key to prosperity is understanding that life pullbacks will give you strength for the next life rally. The greatest power in prosperity thinking is, I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. Blaming is pure survival mode. If you're trying to survive, you cannot prosper. You need to have prosperity thinking to prosper. Survival mode thinking is very, very competitive. Literally, another person has to lose for the person to win. That's not how life works. Another person doesn't have to lose for anybody to win. Because with prosperity thinking, there's more than enough. There's no scarcity. There's abundance. So that's why we never let a problem beat us because we solve it with positive excellence. We seek to find a win-win scenario. This is a bit of a different view of the CTKS Creed, but I really hope it helps. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to learn what part do you like most about the CTKS Creed. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you tomorrow. Bye for now.